today. Sony has made it easier to give them money, and really, that's what any of us would do. This is Checkpoint. Welcome to Checkpoint, where it's occurring to me that if I made a game that talked about fingers so much, I'd be called weird. But when Miyazaki and George R. R. Martin do it, they're geniuses. Who's George R. R. Martin? Ligma Ring. Look, the second Sonic movie is coming out, and it's not enough for Microsoft to give away an Xbox with furry controllers. So Sonic has to corner the breakfast market as well. Which is why Sega has partnered with General Mills to release a limited edition Sonic the Hedgehog breakfast cereal featuring a, quote, fun back-of-the-box activity that will almost certainly not be fun. Featuring Sonic and bigger-budget Sonic on the box, the cereal should hit shelves soon, what with the movie coming out on April 8th. As for the contents of the cereal itself, the box describes it as, quote, sweetened honey-flavored cereal with Sonic marshmallows, a phrase that just trips off the tongue. But the, the General Mills press release describes as, quote, new honey-flavored ring-shaped cereal complete with Chaos Emerald and Spin Dash Marshmallows. Hold up. Paul and Hans. That's meant to be a Spin Dash? I thought that was his head. The Spin Dash is round because he's spinning. Anyway, the only reason I'm even bringing up this serial of lies is to remind you that for every product like this, there exists a press release where someone has to sound excited, but in the blandest, most corporate way possible about milky breakfast candy. As Senior Manager of Licensing at Sega of America, Michael Cisneros puts it, quote, This partnership is a really fun and creative way to integrate some iconic aspects of the Sonic games into a whole new product line, and we're excited to introduce it to Sonic fans. It's not, and you're not, but, I don't know, it's literally Cheerios with Lucky Charms in it. probably tastes alright. Bandai Namco, and yes, that is their new logo, recently announced at the third Gundam conference that they are planning a Gundam Metaverse. Which sounds super rad. I mean, come on, a virtual universe themed after the ongoing hot and cold political conflicts of warring factions populated with space colonies and mobile suits where you can just jump into a giant robot and start blasting and that isn't what this is going to be at all, is it? No, because the first instance of this metaverse is going to be based on Gunpla or plastic figure modeling. Bandai has made some anime based around Gunpla already, so I'm sure there will be lots of tiny figure customization and opportunities to pit your tiny creation against plenty of avatars with haircuts so surreal you could use them to melt your watch. Don't fret, however, future plans will focus on esports, oh shit. Yes, Bandai hopes you will want to either participate in or simply watch and buy merchandise for eSports competitions for Mobile Suit Gundam Battle Operation 2 and Gundam Evolution. Look, you want a reason why people are so wary about the emergence of metaverses plural? Here's exhibit turn A. Corporations may talk a good game about interpersonal communication and good-natured collaboration enhancing the fandom, but what it comes down to is turning your favorite worlds into shopping malls. Bandai has even made it clear that other companies can participate in the Gundam metaverse and individual users, you know, the non-corporate or human type, can even sell their own content to others, all while preserving the Gundam IP rights and presumably giving Bandai a cut. So hey, if you've got your eye on sculpting a thousand unique repaints of a digital GF13009 NFT NF2 Gundam Versailles, and then selling each one to the highest bidder who can maybe sell it to someone else, well, one does not care to acknowledge the mistakes of one's youth. Fortnite has finally excised the last vestiges of the game it once was as Epic have removed base building mechanics, you know, the fort part, from the meta whatever's battle royale mode. Now, we assume this is only temporary, it's something to do with the launch of the new content season, but they took building away, and then after a week changed the name of the main queue to Zero Build, but didn't also add back a Yes Build queue, so it's just Fortnite without the forts, which has been really well received by a lot of current and, in particular, lapsed players for whom the sweatiness of rapid-fire redevelopment conflicted with the desire to land sick no-scopes. 
No word on when building will return, but the fact that Epic has added a proper name for the Zero Build queue probably means that it's here to stay even when building comes back, since it's already proven its worth. And Epic could use some good news this week, since they are once again being sued by someone whose dance moves they ripped off and put in the game as a purchasable emote. But in a new twist, this isn't like when Alfonso Ribeiro's management team convinced him they could win a lawsuit over Fortnite's use of the Carlton dance. These moves are by a professional choreographer who has copyrighted the routine. Lawyers for choreographer Kyle Hanagami prepared a side-by-side -side comparison video, and yeah, that sure is Captain America doing his moves, which has to be pretty wild for Hanagami. What continues to not make sense for me is that Epic has so much money. They just bought Bandcamp. Paying people for their dance moves would be the cheapest positive PR they could ever get, but for some reason, they refuse to do it. Probably because the crushing treadmill to create new emotes is so insurmountable that their artists don't have time to wait for rights clearances when their jobs depend on making Master Chief's booty pop and no fewer than four fresh new ways every month, so they have to resort to stealing dance moves to protect their own careers. But that's none of my business. Wait, hang on. Yes, it is. Breaking news! Capcom is pulling realistic legal simulator Ace Attorney Trilogy from iOS and Android. If you've not purchased a copy to play in your mobile device, the time to download it is now. In other news, Capcom is releasing realistic legal simulator Ace Attorney Trilogy for iOS and Android. If you've not purchased a copy to play on your mobile... Okay, let me straighten this out for you. Capcom had already released Ace Attorney Trilogy for mobile devices some while back. Doesn't matter how long these games have been out since the Game Boy Advance, and frankly, they've been on all sorts of handheld devices since then. What's special about the mobile trilogy is that it was in HD, and you could turn your phone either landscape or portrait to play it. That was kind of cool. I mean, I wouldn't know because I played all three of these on the DS, and so I've never tried them on the phone, but there were some definite enhancements. But soon, in June of 2022, Capcom is going to pull the Trilogy HD mobile port and replace it with a non-HD mobile port based on the console release. Sure, you, you lose the smooth HD graphics, but that'll be replaced with higher quality assets, which probably means they're not 240p, uh, multiple save slots in case you share your tablet with the family, and overall improvements to the UI to make it feel more modern. Definitely worth that. So if you own Trilogy HD, do you get a free upgrade to the new release? Well, as my favorite opposing lawyer Godot might say... Not at all, dumbass! Maybe that was a fan translation. Sony has revealed the details for its revamped online subscription services, and while some gamers are keen to compare it to Microsoft's Game Pass, Sony is already maintaining an easy lead in this console cycle, and it seems like they don't feel that they're competing with Microsoft, rather that they're competing with themselves. And they're kicking their ass. Currently, Sony offers two disparate subscriptions. PlayStation Plus, which is required to play online and comes with free monthly games, 100 gigs of cloud storage, and discounts in the PlayStation Store. And their other service, PlayStation Now, which is a cloud streaming service that allows access to a bunch of old games. Those are getting rammed together like two halves of a sandwich, which magically transforms into a clubhouse sandwich because it now has three tiers and this analogy has immediately gotten away from me. I will explain everything. Please bear with me while I say PlayStation a bunch. The new base tier, PlayStation Plus Essential, is exactly what PlayStation Plus is now, with no changes. So if you have Plus currently, you'll have Plus Essential, and life goes on. It's still $60 US a year, and while you can pay monthly or in three-month bursts for all of these, it's cheapest to pay annually, so that's the milestone I'll be using going forward. The second tier is PlayStation Plus Extra, which adds access to over 400 PS4 and PS5 games. So mostly PS4 games. This is $100 a year, but recall it's a tiered system, so it still includes the essential tier. And considering that PS Now was $60 a year on its own, this is already kind of a $20 savings if you already had both PlayStation Plus and PlayStation Now. Finally, the upper tier is 
PlayStation Plus Premium, which adds a yet further 340 games from earlier eras, with PS3 titles as streamed content, with the actual running of a PS3 game being handled on Sony's end, as well as PS1, PS2, and PSP titles available as a mix of download or streaming, so fuck the Vita, I guess. That one's $120 a year. You can also do any of that cloud streaming on a PC, if you would like. Worth noting that the middle tier does include some high-profile first-party titles, but for right now, Sony doesn't plan to make brand new releases available on this service because, well, they don't think they need to, and they're probably right. Despite how laborious that all sounded, I think Sony's plan was actually to simplify their offerings. And I also think they have simplified their offerings. It just feels like I need a flowchart and two spreadsheets to understand how simple it is before deciding that I don't need it. Wait, but who wins between Nintendo Switch Online, Microsoft Game Pass, and the PlayStation's Plus? What do you mean? They're just products that they sell. Nobody wins. The gamers win, I guess. But if we don't compare similar but functionally incomparable things, how will we determine which corporation deserves our devotion and slavering dedication? Oh, then Nintendo wins. Oh, thank God. Coming up, Legend of Zelda series producer A.G. Aonuma dropped a new video, and I gotta say, his haircut looks pretty damn good. I should get a haircut soon. I mean, I keep saying it's coming, but I keep putting it off. Okay, fine. I'll definitely get it cut by the spring of 2023. Mm -hmm. But if I can compare three functionally yet functionally not no, identical things. Don't. Well, okay. My, my point is, yes. just, just to clarify. Okay. The reason I said that is because it's like, you. there's already this huge barrier of, you know, like, which of these is best? I don't know. What console do you own? Yeah. there's all, That's like massive hurdle number one, right? Right. Like if you own all three of them, then then maybe you need to decide because you, maybe you shouldn't be... I mean, you do what you want with your money, but like you probably don't need all three online game, game library services. I doubt you have time. If you... Yeah. <laughs> if you have enough money that you have all three of the consoles and can afford all three of those fees how how do you what is it that your job is that you have time to spend playing all those massive libraries it's fair yeah so it's so it comes to sort of like if you have no console and you're going into it like we've said for ages i mean like privately i don't know if this is like a stance the show has taken but you know it's like the the console wars in terms of like tech and graphics and you know like fidelity and power and stuff is like is silly right like the games library is ultimately what matters absolutely yeah. so yeah if you're if you have none of those consoles then i guess you want to factor that into to like that that is now part of the accessible game library whether you have game pass or playstation plus whatever or the nintendo switch online given thing. the fact that you could literally just buy a console and then buy the online service that goes with that console and be and like great here's a bunch I, of games hundreds of games yeah, yeah. but like there's so many small knobs to to dial in yeah. that like that I I don't actually think it's comparable. I know that it that it's great for clicks to be yeah. like, you know, what should you buy? Game Pass or PlayStation Plus? But it's like I don't actually think. Well, because uh, every single thing that you say, yes, uh, not you specifically. Oh, but, but we're getting to but, me. But also you specifically. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, uh, this is the, it, this comes up a lot with like Magic the Gathering, right? Where it's like, oh, well, this is, you know, like this is strictly better than, you know, like whatever. Like, ah, but what about this unique situation, right? So it's anything that is like, well, I think this is better for these reasons. There's going to be someone else who can be like, ah, but, mm -hmm. and bring up like some sort of thing. I just don't think it's, yeah. or, I don't know. I, it's you do you. you well, so, I, and I mean, you're being very generous with as far as like hundreds of games. Unless you're talking about NSO, in which case, well, a few yeah. dozen. But, you know, N it's... Nintendo Switch Online is cheaper, That is least. the thing. Yeah. yeah. $20 a year Canadian, $25 a year, and then the expansion... And you can do the that. family plan. Exactly. And you which can is suck your friends what we do. onto the service. So, yeah. I'm in their family. Yeah, it's weird, right? Yeah. Um, but the... We, uh, Heather and I got talking about, like, the idea of the 
PlayStation setup versus the NS- NSO mm-hmm. uh, because and I don't I don't think about Xbox Game Pass because we don't have an Xbox in our house so we don't we don't address that generally but I was just like never shall it darken my doors and, and also you know the PlayStation thing like the new PlayStation Plus tiers are things that just came out but my thoughts on it were that PlayStation saying we're going to give you at our mid tier 400 games. So you still have your two downloadable games from the mm-hmm. base tier. You'll have 400 games available to play, including like the new, the new, the 2018, the new uh, God of War, yeah. and like Spider Man, and like you know some of the pretty spicy first party stuff, but not the newest right. stuff. Right, and then you go even higher than that. And you're like, now we're getting into retro gaming. You know, like mm. oh, the PlayStation's a retro console. It's like, well, I guess we're kind of in that that boat now, aren't we? But the uh, adding that at the top tier where it's like 340 new games that are part of the more retro-ish library Mm -hmm. and it got me thinking like well three new games just came out for nso uh dig dug 2 for the nintendo for the super nintendo earthworm jim 2 okay (laughs) i don't know if i ever played 2 i don't think most people have and then uh mappy land for uh, for NES, Mappy Land, Mappy Land, wow, right? And yeah. I'm like, I meant Mappy was a thing that was like like ar- arcade Atari type stuff, right? Yeah. Like I'm like, this is old, uh, and Mappy Land is just like the new newer, you know. Uh, I guess it's a sequel, but it made me think that I was like, I don't want to play any of that shit, <laughs> and that's just what got announced, right? And and I know like Majora's Mask just recently came out on the on the expansion pass on the N64 set. I'm like, that's cool. There'll be an F Zero X is apparently coming as well. I'm like, okay, that's kind of cool too. If you you know if you're a big fan of F Zero and you want to keep playing, the, you want to see a new game, obviously, but. I don't give a shit about Mappy Land. And actually, in fact, I don't give a shit about all three of those games. And why do I keep seeing stuff from, like, there aren't kids in the playground. Like, if I could talk to Doug Bowser just for a second. and Hi, just Doug. And just sit down with you Doug and just be like, Doug, you're probably my age. Or maybe about a few years older. You got to tell me, was there a time on the playground where, where the kids got together and be like, yo, have you played the new Mappy Land? You know, did you know there's a sequel coming out for Dig Dug? It's Dig Dug 2. Like... I don't think these are the things that gamers got excited about back in the day. Nobody was like, hey, you want to come in my place and play Eliminator Boat Duel by Culture Brain? It's like, <laughs> that wasn't a thing. We never did that shit. <laughs> but you keep bringing those games onto the service like they're a big deal. Like, we should be excited about this. And the fact is, like, nobody is. And I know that the 340 games in that in that PlayStation, PlayStation 2, and PlayStation 3 portfolio, much of that is probably going to end up being dross. Yeah. It's going to be shit no one wants to play, but it pads the numbers. Mm-hmm. And all I'm asking is if you're going to pad the numbers, at least give us some fucking good games at NSO first before we have to start padding the numbers with all the stuff that nobody wants to play. So you're, what you're saying is whoever wins... Nintendo Switch Online loses. It's still not a great value, like, in terms of what's there. It's just that the first-party games are so good Mm -hmm. that, in a way, it's worth paying for that if you've never played them. But if you're old like me, you've played them. Maybe it's not that worth it. It's it's maddening to think that. Uh, Well, that's good, though, because now that'll let us reuse the joke next time we talk about uh, Nintendo Switch Online, you know, featuring, you know, an archive of classic and beloved games and Mappy Land. Yeah. Yeah. And these th- and 30 other titles. <laughs> yeah. 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 Oh, uh last minute news story that landed like just before we started recording is that uh rumored not yet confirmed but E3's probably canceled this year. Yeah. So don't plan on making any trips to wherever they were holding the digital services. Yeah, it was like it's going to be in per- it's going to be in person. Ah, uh, you know what? We're going to do it digitally and now it's like sources unnamed sources close to the to to the people involved are like it's just not happening yeah so however there's probably still going to be like jeff Geely's summer games feely yes that is happening mm-hmm. 